Hello all and welcome. Today we enter the golden era of ocean liners as we take a look at Crossing Oceans. This game sees us building a merchant fleet and guiding it to economic prosperity. We'll acquire steamships, we'll be taking over ports, building trading posts and competing for that blue ribbon as we expand the capability of our fleet. This one is medium complexity, plays 2 to 4 in about 60 to 90 minutes, which is probably more like 90 to 120, and we can see the designer and publisher here as well. Let's take a closer look then. This run through today is just myself with a two player setup. Now it's a rather large board, so I have got reds just on the side here. They got their captains, they got their trading houses, they got their starting ship here, and they got 150 bucks just on the side. And yellows are down the bottom here as well. Now, normally you would place these player boards off the board and you'd have these sort of X markers to show that you're not using the Pacific Ocean in a two-player game at least and you would not use the South Atlantic which is hiding under here but I found it quite nice for the video just to sort of plonk these down and you can see all the activity on them as well so what have we got going on then at the top we've got the shipyards we'll be acquiring the ships we've got the docks here where they're going to go to rest and eventually come off there you've got the rondelle where you're doing your actions and you've got the sort of turn flow here which we'll go through you've got various bits on the board where you don't have to go to those locations to get them it's just the game actually utilizes the board really well for storing money here contracts and various other blue ribbons and some of these trading houses as well and looking at the board you've got in a two-player game then you've got the north atlantic that's in play you start off with some ships there as well you've got the indian ocean and you have got the tasmanian sea here as well so we've got these three areas that we're focusing on on this two-player game now our player board itself depicts all the sort of various goodies you can get and you're trying to collect so the more flat you get multiplied by these sort of uh, tiles you place out are going to give you your victory points in the, end of the game so you can see the further you come down here the more points you're going to get but we'll give you a good demo of how that is going to work so we've sort of set up here we've got our ships they range from level twos all the way to nines and i've got a whole stack on the side so i've kept them out of view for now we're never going to get to the level sevens and i'll give you a good demonstration of how those flow through so let's just go straight in then really yellows are kicking off because they have the oldest ship which was, where are we, the Cutty Sark. Well, not the oldest, but they started with one of the oldest in their hand when you draw from these zeros. So they ended up with this 1870. Now, each of these ships then, you can see the name of it for historical, you know, you can look through the book. There's actually some rules, well, not rules, but a book on all these ships and details. So we can see the flag that it's going to acquire. So these guys have started with a flag, which is great because you set collecting those because you want to multiply them by the points. Well, not multiplied by points, but multiplied by uh, activity during the game to give you most points. You can see the income you're going to get on the far right, so 30 bucks for various activities. And you can see the cost that it would have been at the, the beginning of 50 there. And what else have we got? Now, there's a cost on the start ones because these make up the start ones here, which you can potentially purchase as well. So we'll keep that there. That's for us to try and get out on the board. We've got this really handy overview, which I'll go through each one, what we'll get, what's happening there. So yellows are up there now. They have one of their captains here on the Cutty Sark, and they're going to literally go one, two, three, and then it passes round clockwise. So the first thing they can do then is place a ship in their hand. So they have got one, or they can take a contract. Now, contracts are really useful for the second action. We'll go through those in a sec. So we will just take a contract. Let me put that in front of us. Number two, then, we can spend contracts as many as you want and as many times. So for one contract, you can either get 20, 20 bucks, boom. You could take a coal cube and place it straight away on one of your ships, or you could have the option to move extra spaces on the rondelle. So... Mm, and if we, we'll probably do that in a second. If we had two contracts, which we haven't, we've only got the one. So if you're building up from round to round, you could place one of your trading houses just here. And you get one of these little trading house representatives for your player board as well. Now that is a replica almost of one of these actions on here called house. But you don't get the income. So I'll give a good demonstration of how that works. So what we're going to do is we... Hmm, we're probably just going to go and pass. You can pass that, it's optional. So number three then, the rondelle. You've got all these very actions. You've got ships, you've got region, fleet, and they're all explained on this overview. So 
I'm just going to kick off with ships. So you can move anywhere you want, similar to previous Matt Goetz games, and we're going to go here for ships. And what does that do? I can now buy up to three ships from the shipyard or the docks. Now, the difference is the prices on the shipyards will be the price at the bottom of the actual ship plus what is below it. So you can see the gradually get more expensive as the docks are only the price on them. And I start off with 150 bucks. And I'm looking at these ships and I'm thinking, right, I've got that for 60, 60, 50, really cheap. But it's the age of the actual ships themselves because they're going to sort of be made redundant in these areas as newer ships come along. So maybe I want to try and get one of these sort of 1881s, but that's going to cost me 70 plus the 60, so 130. I'm also looking at the flag types. So what sort of race am I going to, am I trying to get in? So am I going to get these blue ribbons maybe, which is all about uh, having the fastest ship in the North Atlantic? Maybe I want to get more of these coal piers and, and, and go for these black ones, which I've started off with one. Very tricky. So we've gone for ships. I'm looking at, ah, uh, this may be one I want. Is it fast? It's got, fit. so I should add that some of them have speed and tonnage. So this one's got 15 knots and that is going to be how you're racing to acquire these blue ribbon sort of prestige uh, to, to build on here. So at the moment, the, 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 this one here is 15 knots. So I need something that's going to be faster than that to sort of participate. And at the moment, besides this 16 here, shall we go all in? Let's do it. So we're going to go for this one then. So we've only bought one ship of the three, and that's fine. So we're going to pay 70 plus a 60, 130. So we place this in the supply. What are we getting? 20 change. Okay. Now this card goes, well, this ship goes in front of us, which is probably just out of your camera view. But we take the flag, and you store the flags at the top, which show now we've got potentially three points. So three points here times the one flag. And the further we get down by participating, in this case, in this this uh, blue ribbon competition, we'll get more points. So no matter how many you take, one to three, you're going to replenish always with three new ships. So what we're going to do, we're going to move them left to right. So this flag overtakes this one here. So that's out of play because in the docks, it kind of shimmies them on. We move this one along. So this one's going to kick out this. You can see these docks, each ship there is, is, of a, is of a flag type. And then this final one, so we've actually bumped up all the ships there. So there we go. Now we've made way for, oh, well, I've gone one too many. We've got, uh, what have we got there? Four spots. Did I start with one now, actually? Yeah, I did, didn't I? So let's go back one step then. Where was that? That was on here, wasn't it? So we'll put this ship back on here. So we've made space for three new ships to come out. And it doesn't matter how many you buy, if you buy three, you're still bringing out three. So, three new ships, and you can see they're going to flow through the eras of uh, what we've got, late 1800s to early 1900s. Now, we match up the flag, so we've got a green one here, we've got a star, and we've got the black sort of flag there. Okay, so we have bought, and we've done our three actions, literally over to the next player. Okay, what are they going to go for? They are going to go and demonstrate... Well, actually, we're skipping ahead. We've got to do number one. Let's place a ship up. So these guys have got this one here. So they're going to place a ship. Now, you can place it in any empty space. And remember, two-player games only three areas. And let's say, you know, this one has not got a speed on it. Hmm, tricky. Let's go here, then. So first, if there's empty space, yes, great. Go in there. If not, you potentially bump in someone else. And that's what these lanterns are for. They uh, sort of remind you who has the oldest ship in that area. So we put it in port here. And as soon as you do that, you're going to place one of your captains on there. And you're going to take a fuel... Uh, some coal from the supply and place it on there. On there, you notice some of these ships known as clippers, for example, this one, they actually have an X mark for coal, so you don't actually need co uh, coal to activate that one. But all the other ships, you're going to need coal on there when you can to be able to do some of these juicy actions. So we've placed a ship, number one, done. We, we couldn't take a contract in that case. And number two, then, they've got no contracts to spend, so over to number three. So what are they going to do with these ships? They've got a nice little area going on here. So they're going to go to region. So we're going to move this over to here. And there's only one spot with region on. And it says in here, choose one region and all the owners. So if a yellow captain was here, they'd activate as well, if they did have a call to do so. They're already. <clears throat> now these are ready because you've got a call on. And this one doesn't need call. So we look at all the ships. And if you did have trade houses there, which strategically I'd probably have built a trade house first, you get 30 bucks for those as well. But I'll give you a demo later. So we're literally just going to take income. 
20 plus the 30, we're going to get 50 bucks, and we've spent this car, which goes back to the supply. So the reds have activated region. Back around to yellow then. They are going to place a ship. Now they have this fantastic new ship here. It's 1881. And let's say we're well, 16 knots. That's why we got in it. So we're going to go up in here to the North Atlantic, place it there. So we're going to put a captain on, a coal straight away. And that's number one. Number two, we do have a contract, but I'm not necessarily after much money. I could move extra spots on here if I wanted. Now, how that works is you get to move up to three spots anyway. So one, two, three. But if you wanted to move to these remainder four spots here, you can't go back on the same one. You could have spent a contract here and then I could then move to any of these spots. So it only costs the one contract. And where am I? Do I want the blue ribbon? Yeah, I probably do want the blue ribbon, actually. Fleet House. Okay, let's do that instead. So we're not going to spend the contract. Number three, we're going to move one spot. And we are now racing in the North Atlantic. So we do have the fastest ship. And we have a, a ready ship. So we've got a coal. So we spend the coal. And the income we make is double whatever your income is. So 40 times the two, we are going to get 80 bucks. Now, if there was a tie, you would be required to have two calls. So let's say uh, it was 15 and a 15. Uh, I believe one in that case would have got it. But let's say this ship had coal on it as well as a different ship. You just need two ship because your, your staff on the ship are having to work extra hard to power it across for that blue ribbon. Now, you take one of these as well. You've acquired one of these and you pop it here. Now, underneath on this particular column, there's no costs. But you can see as you place on some of the other columns and rows, you're going to have to pay the cost depicted there. So at the moment, if the game was to end now, which is ludicrously early, we would have five points times the one flag okay over to the red player then so are they gonna they got no ships to place they are going to take a contract and they are hmm, what are they going to do now so they're going to place was i put a coal on here I can't remember what i did now. i did a region action didn't i so they're going to spend this contract which is really useful because you can actually just take a coal and put it on one of your ships now the rule of kind of law here is that you have to average them out amongst your ships so if you had four ships of your ownership across the board and there was no coal well there was say free coal out there one on each one and one of them never had it you couldn't place it on a ship that already had a coal you'd have to even it out and put it on the ship that never had the coal so it's going up in layers so once every ship has got one coal you can then put another coal on them to go through the twos and you can only ever have a maximum of free coal on each ship you can never be in a position where one ship has free coal and another ship has has none so it's kind of fairly distributed so we've took a coal and we spent our contract now why did we do that well, we are, well, why did I do that? So, <laughs> reds are, oh, where are we? So, we've got ships. Maybe we want to, we can't do region again because there's not only one region. And we'd have to go all the way around and we couldn't land on the same spot. So, we've got ships, blue ribbon or fleet. Okay, let's go. Well, I should probably go to ships because we haven't actually bought any yet. So, let's do that. I, I was thinking of going to fleet because that's why I loaded it with coal because fleet lets you activate all your ships and get the income but it's probably a bit early so let's go ships then we've got 150 150 bucks burning a hole and what are we going to get then so let's go for something well you, it's this interesting balance of going for something that's got a really good uh you know a modern a modern ship with a good date on it because it's going to oust in and have more longevity on the board are we going to go for some of these cheap ones because you essentially after these tokens to populate if your end game scoring and equally these sort of multi-colored flags on the side here these are going to be worth points depending on how many different types of flags you've set, set collected so at the moment this is only worth two vps because there's only two types of flags so you also want to sort of consider getting them while they're cheap these sort of ones here so we're going to go for this one that's only going to cost us 50. we place that in front of them and we put the flag there and we pay our money more importantly now even though we took just the one from the dock, we could buy another one actually, which we might do. Maybe we're going to go for this one as well. So that's going to cost 60. So we're getting these tokens quite cheap here. And we're going to take 40 change. So we took two ships. <clears throat> we still replenish with three. So we've got a budgies down. We've got one here. We've got two there. And this one is free. So we've got three spots. Shift these down here. 
and we're still in area two heading into freeze there we go now we match the flags oops what have we got we got this one we got this one and we have that one okay loaded up so over to the next player then yellows we do have a ship in play and we are going to we're not going to place that just yet instead we're going to take a contract which gives us two so on this round here we're going to spend these two are we Ooh, we could do with a coal there really we could utilize this one okay so we're going to spend these two coal uh, these two contracts to perform this action which lets us take one of these trading houses now it has to be the certain conditions so you need a ship in port so these are known as as the ports here connected up here and you need it to be ready now in this case we don't need coal for this one so it is ready so we can place one of these ports one of these trading houses, I should say, on this port in Sydney. And that is worth three victory points at the end of the game. Now, equally, we get to take one of these colours here. It says there, plus one of these. And these are going to add to our board. So maybe we haven't actually got any flags in them yet. We're going to go for a green one. So we plonk it there. And we don't have to pay any cost because, you know, there's no cost uh, depicted on the board there. Now, we then go to number three. And that was saving is the action of going to house which we could well we're not going to we can't afford to go to now because we haven't actually got a ship ready so the only other ship we've got is here you can only ever have one of these trading houses of your color here you can have other players and if other players do want to build here they're going to be paying you 30 bucks as well and obviously if you're playing a four player game you could really rinse that income so yellows are probably we're not going to go fleet we're not going to go house. We could do some more money, really. Let's go ships, then. So we've moved three along. We're looking at them ships. How much have we got? we got oof, not a lot, actually, 90. Could we go for maybe a green one? Because, look, we, we've got this green trading house. So we're going to go for this one. So we place that air token here, and we spend all of our money 90 okay i was there's loads of ways to generate money in this game folks he says okay so we took that one and we only took one of the three so we're going to now replenish always take three more remember so this one is going to oust that one so this one hasn't even had a chance to be used it's gone and then finally this one which is going to budge that one so there's this nice flow of ships sort of constantly coming in play getting cheaper and cheaper it's all about those sort of flags you're after and sort of you believe it or not the tonnage as well is, is is crucial to look out for which i'll i'll just quickly talk about tonnage once i've just replenished these flags because uh, as i say there's various ways to get income now you can see these ones you've got the the knots we've already mentioned and that's about racing to get the blue ribbons to get these to get the victory points you've also got tonnage and if you actually do this cargo action if you just take away the zeros basically you're going to get 10 times that number so 10 pounds per thousand tonnage so six times 10 you're going to get 60 bucks if you use this ship for cargo so you want to get some of those ships potentially and start making money that way so where are we reds was it no yellows bought a ship over to reds now we've got two ships in play here uh we're not in play just yet and we're going to put one out so what have we got we've got these two we've got 1871 and 1878 mm. now these guys have got a speed of 14 knots which isn't fast enough to participate there they have got a tonnage though so they could go and use the cargo option we're kind of looking at that cargo option is slightly out of their range they've got a fleet they could go for a house maybe which means i'll do house option for you so we're going to place this one down now when you place a new ship you get a captain and you get a coal let's go here we'll work on this sort of region so we place our captain take a coal and that was this action here we've got no contracts to spend this one red is going to go to house and conditions have been met a ship is in port there's a coal on it so it's ready and they've not got one of their trading houses there so we are going to and i'll just double check and do it so we're going to take income we'll put port with your ship but without own house yet yeah, take income of the ship in port so we're going to take our income then so we are getting 30 bucks 
Oh, that's a nice little loon, and this is reds. And what else have we got? Take our income of the shipping port. And we place one house. Yep, place one house. And we're going to buy one trade token, which is going to be one of these of our colour. And where should we go? We'll go for a red in this case, because they've already got one of these red flags. It doesn't cost us there. Now, every time we do an action here again, we've potentially got another income earner of, of 30 bucks for that one. And we spend our coal for doing that action. Okay, over to Yellows, who we are going to demonstrate placing a ship then. And we're going to go for this one. And we are going to want to put it in this region to really demonstrate how the sort of flux and flow of areas can change hands with this power struggle of these modern ships taken. Now, thematically speaking, the, the routes, these ports, that they all kind of depict routes to Europe. So that's the essence of the game. These don't actually move, which kind of confuses in the title. You know, you're crossing the oceans, I said, but they actually just stay there and you're fighting for area control almost to, to, to get these ports and make income from those shipping routes. So we're going to go in here. Now, there's no empty spot. So we kick out the older ship which has got this lantern on. So the captain goes back to that player, ship goes back to them, and we place our ship in there. We look for the older ship, which is now 1874. Place that now with the lantern to show us which one's going to get kicked out next. Place our captain on here, and we get a coal. We haven't got any contracts, so we're going to yellows. So we could do cargo. Let's do that. Cargo. So we have got two ships that actually have tonnage. Uh, this one is ready, though. That one's... 4,000 tons, but there's no coal on it. So we're going to do this one. So it's ready. We spend the coal. 5,000 tonnage. So 5 times the 10 is 50 bucks. There we go. Over to reds then. And what have they got? they got one more ship here. They've got a bit of a region. Well, not so much of a region going on there. This ship isn't. 1871, 30 bucks. Where are we? We could get ships, cargo, coal. Have they got a tonnage? They have a tonnage here. Maybe they are just going to take a contract, which they're going to spend straight away here to get a coal to load at this one. And that's number two. Number three. Right, what have we not done? Well, we're not going to do coal now. Region would have been nice, but that is just out of our reach. We'd needed to spend a contract here. To be able to move there as well. And if we had loads of contracts, which we keep spending, we could have took 20 bucks. If we say we had two contracts, we could have spent one to get 20 bucks, one to, to get a call. If we had another contract, because you could do as much stuff as you want here. You're not restricted just to one action per you know row or overall in that box. So our options are ships then. We've got some money, not the world of money. Cargo, I think we need to generate. We'll, we'll go cargo as well. So we're looking at probably this ship here. I think that's our only ship we've got cargo. So we spend the coal. Four times the 10, they're getting 40 bucks. Okay. And back around to yellows. They haven't got a lot of money. We've got this ship here. Right, we're getting out. We are going to... We're not going to oust anyone there. 1870. So in fact, we... Well, 1870. It's even older than these ships. We couldn't even go there. We need a modern ship. Let's go up here instead. Let's get the most out of that while we can. So it's really hotly contested over here in the uh, Indian Ocean, right? So we're going here. We put our captain on. It might be that you buy a ship and you don't even get it out, so you've just got it for the token. Uh, we put a coal on here. Uh, we have no contracts to activate, so we are yellows. So we could... Let's demonstrate coal. Probably not the... Yeah, we'll do coal. So coal then lets you firstly buy a coal pier, which are these stack here. We haven't utilised these yet. Uh, we're going to do so, and there's no cost at the moment for doing that, but the next one we put down is going to cost us 30. So this is developing your your potential, well, your, uh, what's the word, your number of coal you'll receive on future rounds. Well, straight away, actually, because the, the next part, number two of coal, is to distribute one coal per coal icon. So we've now got three icons there. So we're going to take three of these, and we are going to load up our ships. So we've got a yellow one here. I've got a, another captain there. This one doesn't require coal. So we've got one on each of our ships. So this now 
can be placed on a ship with two. So we're probably going to go for this one because that's our fastest ship there. It's got a relatively good age, 1881. So we know it's going to be there a while. And we're hopefully going to go for that blue ribboned prestige. So that was our action call. So looking at this then, what have we not done? So we've done ships. So you can basically buy one to three ships and then you replace them always with three ships. Fleet then. We haven't shown you fleet. We're a little bit way off. We'll try and show that to you. Region we did. Maybe I could do another region. We'll do another region. So over to Reds then. They are going to take a contract. Remember, they have got a ship they could place, but we're going to show you something else. Take a contract to then spend that contract to take a coal and load up this one. They are then going to move to region now. For straight the yellows have just made their ship ready. So region, we pick this region and we are going to get... Well, we're ready. We've got ships that are ready. So we spend these two coal. And we're going to get our income. 30 plus 30 is 60. Now, each trading house we have is 30 as well. So we're going to get 90 bucks for that one. And equally, our opponent is going to get some money as well. So they have to spend their, their coal. And they're going to get, oh, oh, wow, 50 bucks. Okay, they did well out there. But they might have had a strategy to do something else with that coal. So we've kind of activated that there now the more trading houses you've got if you've had these two trading houses as well you would have had 90 bucks potentially for those three were full now it's only the player who activates it who gets the bonus as such from those trading houses the other player would only get the income from here okay what, what else can we show you then so yellow is going to be up We've done region blue ribbon maybe we'll do blue ribbon again hmm yeah we need some income so yellows are up they're not going to place a ship they're going to take a contract instead and oh we could spend that contract to go further afield yes we are so we're going to spend this contract to be able to move further than just the three spots so normally we could go one two three anywhere over here but we've spent this to go one extra to fleet so we could have gone anywhere else besides the spot we originally started on so let's demonstrate fleet then you're going to take income for all your ships that are ready. That's a shame this one was, was the coal was used and that's not ready anymore. But we have got this one here. So we're going to get 40 bucks there. We spend the coal. 30 for that one. So that's 70 in total. And this one doesn't require coal. So we're still going to get income. So that's 90 bucks for using the fleet action. Okay, over to reds. What have we not? I think we've showed you everything now. I've shown you ships yet. So ships is all about buying up there and you, you have plenty of free. Fleet, you get an income from all your ships that are ready. Region, we showed you here where you get just the region and you get the bonuses from these. Cargo, we've shown you the tonnage, the blue ribbon. We, yep, we did have a, a race to get that. Coal, we've shown and we've shown you. So that is all the actions. Now this player but also shows you when you need to spend that coal as well and when you don't on various ones. So that's, that's a nice touch. So where are we then? We anything else I can show you that we've not quite achieved yet? We've spent two to I think we've pretty much demonstrated everything now. So let's just play a couple more goes then. And there's no rounds as such. You're literally just playing through these car these sort of ships as they flow through. Once that deck has been exhausted, that sort of triggers the end game, and you'll play three more rounds. It kind of recommends putting free call on the player who was the starting player with the Cutty Sark, I think it was. And then you play out the three rounds. So one round gone, two round, three round, and then you will add up VPs. I don't actually think I've got a lot else to show you. So I might just call it there and sort of talk a little bit about end game then. So it says everything you need to know on the board here, which I like. So firstly, any of these ooh, contracts or coal on ships, you're going to convert into 20 bucks each. You're then going to turn all your money into victory points. So 100 bucks is one victory point. You are then going to get three victory points for each of these trading houses you've got out on the board and three points for each captain in place. So at the end, there's a nice little uh, hustle to get your captains out there and get the, the, the best, mod, the most modern ships to keep them out there. You are then going to get, which is probably the, the bulk of your victory points, is the multiplier for these boards. So if it was to finish now, these guys would get, so they got one of these blue and white tokens. And this is where they got up to the five victory point mark. So five VPs, they're going to get five VPs for this token. They're going to get five VPs for that one. Now, if they, let's just take some of these. Now, if it was the case that, you know, they had gone sort of all in, weirdly, into one of these 
trading house or company, should we call them. You can see this is worth nine points, but they got no flags. So it's worth zero, zero. So you have to really balance the flags you're retaining from those ships and investing in those with the investments you're making here as well. And this one, if this was how the game ended, this one would be with three victory points because there's three types of flags there. Add up all those points, and you can see the sort of dark grey and black sort of uh, track around the board. Whoever has the most points is the winner. There we are, folks. Enjoy.